Hey guys, my name is Melissa Pokies. This is the video you're gonna wanna watch if you are frustrated because you have no idea where to start with the Clubhouse app. So my mission in life is to encourage people to become the best versions of themselves because who you are matters. And today, I wanna dive into how to use Clubhouse effectively so you can crush it. Let's do this. Clubhouse is a live audio app and it's an amazing experience where you get to go into any room and listen to people talk on a wide range of topics. You can take the stage, you can literally talk to people from all over the world. And here's the most interesting part in my opinion, is that these live rooms, when it's done, it's gone forever. There's nothing recorded, so this kind of creates an incredible FOMO mentality. And I'm not gonna lie, I've spent countless hours on the app, and that's because Clubhouse is so unique in that aspect. It's pretty much like networking on steroids, you guys. Ooh. You can make incredible connections incredibly rapidly and discover rich interactive content. So if you want to make the most out of Clubhouse, you are going to need to know a little bit about how to use it effectively. So let's get familiar with the basic function of the room. I want you to think about the room as something inside a convention center that you walk into with a topic that interests you. First, you'll see people up on the stage whenever you're inside of that room. And if that room seems kind of blah to you, you can click the leave quietly button and very easily leave the room. Now, if you choose to stay in a room, you'll notice a few things. The first thing is the raised hands icon at the bottom center of your app. This allows anyone in the room to click it and what this does is it notifies the host or moderator of the room and that you'd like to be pulled up on the stage to engage in the conversation. The moderators can decide to bring you up on the stage or not. In some cases, the raised hand feature will look gray and that's because the moderator decided to turn off the raising hand feature. When that happens, everyone in the room is notified that the raising hand feature has been turned off. This is usually done when you're in a room and they're doing some sort of a presentation. Moderators may do this because they don't want to be distracted by anyone raising their hands or they might be ending the session soon. They can always turn it back on if they feel like it and allow people to get on the stage again. The plus symbol on the bottom right of your screen allows you to ping someone into the room you're in and these are people that you're following. If you like a room and you think the content's gonna resonate with them, click that plus symbol and search for individuals to ping in. You can click on them and all of a sudden, they will be allowed right into the same room as you. Anyone who's speaking inside the room will have a gray circle shape around their photo and that's how you know who's speaking. If you happen to be on the stage, the mute sign in the bottom right hand corner is how you can mute and unmute yourself. Now here's something really interesting when you're on the stage and someone on stage says something really, really valuable. You can tap on the mic button to mute and unmute yourself a few times to signal the room that you are simply clapping for them. By doing that, it kind of sends a symbol of like, oh, that was awesome. So. If you are a speaker and someone loves what you say, watch that mic icon. Um, the general protocol is to always mute yourself if you're not talking. If you forget to do that, sometimes the moderators will do that for you, but just make sure you, you develop the habit of uh, muting yourself if you are not speaking. Now, one of the cool things about being in a room is you can go ahead and click on a person's bio. It can be someone on stage or someone in the audience. And if you click on someone's bio and you swipe up, you can see how many followers they have and who is following them. You may wanna follow some of the people that they follow also. And here's why this is important. There's an algorithm that makes a decision about what content to show you based on who you are following and what clubs you've added. If you go to the very bottom, you will also have access to this person's Twitter account and Instagram account if they've linked it. This is really important because there's no way to private message anyone on this app. So you'll wanna for sure link your Twitter or Instagram account to your Clubhouse profile. Here's the thing. 
Even if you're not active on Instagram or Twitter, people will have the ability to message you telling you that they loved what you had to share and you make, make a great connection on the stage. And most of the networking has to happen off platform to develop that relationship. So don't forget to link it. As you keep scrolling down on someone's bio at the very bottom, you will see the clubs that they belong to. Here's why clubs are a fascinating um, aspect of Clubhouse. The people that create clubs have members and followers. And if you look at all the clubs, you can click on them and check out what that club is all about. For example, in this club, you can see what it's all about. The very first person listed under that club is the creator of that particular club. And I recommend you following the owner of that club and some others in that club as well. If possible, you wanna join clubs because this will help create a better experience within the app for you. Now going back to a person's bio, let's talk about what you can do with them. One option is to obviously follow them. Now, if you like what they had to share on the stage or if you know them. Now here's an important thing to understand when you follow people. There's a bell to the left of the follow button and if you click on that bell, it'll say always, sometimes, and never ever. The magic of this app is that whenever someone you follow goes up on a stage, you will get notifications. These notifications can get a little annoying if there are people that you're following that take the stage a lot. And there are some people that you might not ever want to be notified when they go up on stage, right? The default for those people who go, go up on stage a lot is sometimes. Click on sometimes mode and for those you never want to see on stage, click on never ever. Now there are some people that you are going to always want to be notified when they do go up on the stage. And in that case, you want to click always. To the right of the following button is also a little icon that has some stars on the side of it. If you click on it, it's going to show you people who are like that person. And it allows you to scroll through and find other people to follow. Let's talk about setting up your own bio. You'll see your photograph in the upper right hand corner. And if you click on that, this is where you can begin to edit your bio. And I want to draw attention to the gear in the upper, upper right corner, um, because the first thing that you're going to notice is the notifications. I strongly recommend that you click on very infrequent and turn off the include trending rooms. If you don't do this, you're going to get bombarded with notifications all day long. Now let's talk about how to pick your interests. When you enrolled into Clubhouse, you were asked to push a couple of different buttons to indicate what you were interested in. When you have some free time, you're gonna wanna click on this magnifying glass button right here, and you're gonna be able to find conversations about anything and everything. For example, you click on identity. You can click on Gen Z and you'll see people who are also interested in Gen Z. There will be a list of clubs to follow as well. The reason why I recommend you click on everything that you're interested in is because this helps tell the algorithm of Clubhouse the types of content you're interested in. Okay, so you notice that I moseyed out of that room, but even though I'm exploring, I am actually still in that room because I didn't click on leave quietly. Now, how I can see the room again is simply by clicking circles on the bottom left. In addition, you can still raise your hand if the raise hand button is turned on. If you're on the stage still, you can mute and unmute yourself. So with that being said, if you are still in a room, you can scroll through what's known as the hallway. I want you to think of the hallway as a hallway in a conference hall. With different rooms to the left and the right, you're going to go in all sorts of rooms that have different contents based on your interests, the clubs you belong to, the people that you follow. Now, depending on what type of time of day you're in the app, you may not see a lot of activity going on. If you're all the way to the bottom, you're gonna see a little button that says explore, and that's gonna open up more rooms for you to explore. Now there's that little button on the center of your hallway called start a room. Let's talk about that. How do you start a room? Well, when you click on start a room, you're going to see a couple of options that come up. First, there's open room. Second, there's social room. And third, there is closed room. 
Open rooms are spontaneous rooms that you can create and people will just pop in and out of them. Peek inside, some will stay, some will go, depending on the topic and vibes that they're getting from the room. Drop the ego. <laughs> social rooms are only for the people within your social network in the Clubhouse app. And closed rooms are only for people that you follow. You can tell you're in a closed room because there's going to be a lock sign next to it. The important thing about starting a room is adding a topic. This is where you get the opportunity to write in a description of the room. It can literally be about anything. Once you're done with that, you can start the room, but you cannot edit the topic name after you have started the room. As the moderator of that room, you have the ability to allow people from the audience to go up to the virtual stage with you, whether they've raised their hands or not. Now, you also have the ability to meet people as they come onto the stage. Moderators and the audience who come onto the stage have the ability to move people back down to the stage. And you can also give people moderation status. Someone's a moderator when they have that little green bean next to their face. They have full control of the room just like you do. The added moderator can decide to turn on the raising hand feature or off the raising hand feature. Any moderator can take a room that is private and click the open it up button and all of a sudden it becomes a public room. If you decide to add other moderators, make sure you trust them enough not to hijack your room or kick people out. All right, back to the hallway. Swipe left and here you'll see all the active clubs you're following as well as who's available to chat. And you can chat with those you are following if they're free and if they want to. What's cool is I can click on any one of these faces and I can go right into that room they're in or view their bio. Notice here how the green dots on the bottom right of people's photos. Notice how you can continue to scroll down. Um, the dot goes from dark green to light green. This is a minute by minute indicator that tells you how long it's been since those individuals have been on the Clubhouse platform. Now let's go back to the magnifying glass on the top right hand of your screen. This is an incredible opportunity for you to discover people to follow and clubs to follow. If you click on it, the first thing you're gonna notice is it says find people in clubs. Pro tip, I'm not a pro. This section is keyword rich, you guys. This is helpful to know because you can put keywords into your own bio and it will allow people to see your profile because of the certain keywords you have in there. So let's take a look at the people to follow section. These are people who have your phone number in their contact on their iPhone, as well as people who follow some of the same clubs as you. The find conversations about section is where you'll be able to add interest to your profile. So Clubhouse can curate rooms with content you are only interested in. And these are rooms you'll see in your hallway. It's worth saying that there are thousands of rooms going on at any given time and you're only gonna see a small fragment of those rooms. That's why it's so important, you guys, to make sure that you create your interests and you are following appropriately within this app. Let's click in this envelope. As of this recording, Clubhouse is an invite-only platform and this is where you'll find your invitations you've sent out. You'll also be able to see how many invitations you have left to give out. Also, it's very important for you to understand that as of this recording, these invitations are only going to work for someone that has an iPhone or someone who has an iPad. When you give out these invitations, you'll need to make sure you have the contacts you're giving the invitation to and that they are in your device. That's how you can send out an invitation. If you're super active on the platform, and you are giving away your invitations, you'll get more invitations. So um, you'll start with one invitation to give out and all of a sudden you'll have two and then three and then four. So don't feel like you have to hold on to your invitations. Um, give freely and you will be able to gain more invitations to give away. Every week you might get more invitations. Some weeks you may get even more. If someone you happen to have in your contacts directory is new to the app, you'll notice a hashtag that shows up in the bell and you will have the choice to allow them into the room 
and cut in line without having to use one of your invitations. So you see that bell? You might want to consider allowing them into the clubhouse. Here's why. If you click on anyone's profile and scroll to the bottom, you'll see who nominated them and that affiliation is tied to the profile forever. There are some people who you really want to let into the app because if they take off on the app and a lot of people check out their profile, they might see you at the bottom. They nominated um, them back into the app and they may want to follow you. Now back in the hallway, you're also going to see an icon that looks like a calendar. It's going to show you events from clubs that you follow and clubs that you have started within the last hour. And as you continue to scroll down, you can see all of the different events. If you click the bell, you'll be able to follow all the speakers to ensure that you get a notification when that conversation begins. If you choose to host an event of your own, you can also schedule it in your calendar. You can also assign people to that event when you click on a title of the event, this shows you what the topic will be about. Here, you can copy a link, you can tweet the event out, you can share the link through text or social media, email, and you can add it to your Google or Apple calendar. If you don't see anything that interests you, go to the all upcoming, and this will literally show you the entire list of events that people have put on the scheduler. Not everyone has a room that's scheduled. And as a matter of fact, quite a few rooms are not scheduled at all. So what you see in this calendar is just those that have gotten organized enough to plan a room. This opens up to an entirely new opportunity to find people, find new rooms, find new information, find new friends. You may want to put some of these on your calendar, depending on if you turned notifications off. So you can remember to actually go into these rooms and experience the event. I mentioned earlier that the directory where you can search for people and clubs is keyword rich. So it really, really is important for you to craft your profile that you write it in such a way that it contains the words and phrases that people might want to search, um, including words that will uh, relate to your interests, right? So in your bio, you're going to want to put words in there that might be helpful to friends who are trying to find you. Also, when you're in a room, people will click on your photo if you're on the stage and check out your bio. So they'll discern whether they want to follow you or not by your bio. Even if it's uncomfortable for you to brag a little bit about yourself, you really should share some of the things that you've accomplished in your profile because as people are scrolling, they can begin to see more about who you are and what you're interested in. Another thing is I like to include topics that interest me. I think it's important for people who might be looking at you as, as you're in the audience and deciding to pull you up on stage. And the last thing is do not forget to connect your Instagram and Twitter accounts. You'll be surprised at the kind of genuine connections you're going to make in these rooms, whether it be for business or for friendships and keeping in touch. All right, I hope you got value from this. In the next video, I'm going to share tips on how to become a moderator with a room that stands out from the rest. As Clubhouse continues to become one of the apps for the people, follow me here on IG and give me a follow on Clubhouse. Message me on IG. My handle is at Melissa Pokies. I'd love to connect with you. Tag people on this post who you feel will get value from this video. Be kind, keep shining, and I'll see you on Clubhouse.